In this video, we're going to find all solutions of this equation. So this is a, an interesting equation because cosecant of 2x is really the same thing as 1 over sine of 2x. You could really think of it this way, and then you have the sine 2x right here, and then this is equal to 0. So if you set each factor equal to 0, for example, if you set sine 2x equal to 0, um, that's fine, you can solve. However, uh, any value of x that makes sine 2x equal 0 is not going to work in this equation because we have 1 over sine 2x. Um, so let's just go ahead and distribute through and ignore this fact that this could be equal to 0 because it can't, right? Because we're dividing by sine 2x. So distributing through, sine 2x times 1 over sine 2x is going to give us 1. Then minus, this will be 2 sine 2x, and then this is equal to 0. And we can solve this for sine 2x by subtracting 1 from both sides like this. So we get negative 2 sine 2x, and that's equal to negative 1. And then we can just divide both sides by negative 2. So divide, divide, that gives us sine 2x, and that's equal to 1 over 2. And we have to find all solutions uh, for which this is true. So recall that on the unit circle, sine is the y-coordinate, so we're going to be either in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2. Also, uh, when you see something like this, you should ask yourself, you know, what angle can we take the sine of that will give us 1 half? So since sine is the y-coordinate on the unit circle, it's going to be up here. So first note that the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And this is, this is just from memory, right? This absolutely requires memorization. So this is something you know. You should know the ones, I guess, for like pi over 4. Those are easy because you get square root of 2 over 2 for both sine and cosine in that case. Tangent, you can usually figure out if you know sine and cosine. So really the tricky ones are like pi over 3 and pi over 6. So like the sine of pi over 3, that would be the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so in theory, once you memorize this one, you know that the sine of pi over 6 is the other one. It's 1 half and many ways to do it. So that's going to be one angle. That's going to be right here. That's going to be pi over 6. The other angle has to be over here, right? And it, it will be pi over 6 less. Right? It'll be pi over 6 less. And the reason I know that is that's just how the trick functions work, right? Um, the angle here, this dotted angle here that I'm drawing, that's called a reference angle, and that angle is pi over 6. Because the trig function values of an angle and a reference angle are the same, except possibly for a sign change. And then this is pi. And we want to think of that as a number over 6. So we can think of it as 6 pi over 6, and that's what I do. And then I say, okay, because it has a reference angle of pi over 6, it's pi over 6 less than 6 pi over 6. So it's 5 pi over 6. And once you get this thinking, like once you know how to do this, all you have to do is memorize this, because the other ones are easy. And from this, you can get the rest. And you can do all of this like this. And this is like... This is the minimal memorization method, in my opinion. There's other ways of doing it. Um, people make little charts and stuff. Um, just the bare minimum, uh, bare minimum memorization. So pi over 6 is one of the answers, right? So what we do is we know that 2x is equal to pi over 6. That's one of the answers. But the thing is, if we're at pi over 6, let me use a different color. So say we're here. We can add or subtract 2 pi, right? Or we can subtract or add 2 pi um, to get back there. So this is plus 2k pi. And then to solve for x, we can divide by 2. It might be easier to see if you multiply by 1 half. In fact, you can just multiply each term by 1 half because you could distribute it on the right-hand side. So you would get x equals pi over 12 plus k pi. And k here is an integer. You can write where k is an integer. I'm going to be really lazy and say k, and the symbol here means belongs to, is a member of, is an element of. And then I'm going to use the symbol for integers. And I believe, uh, I don't really speak German, but I believe it's because the German word for numbers is salen, I believe. I'm not really sure. But 
It's z. It's a set of integers. So k is an element in the set of integers. Okay, the other one is 5 pi over 6, right? We established that. So then we would just take 2x again, right? Because that's what's here. And we set that equal to uh, 5 pi over 6. And again, plus 2k pi, because we can add or subtract any multiple of 2 pi to 5 pi over 6, and we end up in the exact same place on the unit circle. Again, to solve for x, because we have a fraction on this first term, it might make a little bit more sense to multiply by 1 half. It makes things a little bit easier to look at. So x is equal to, so 1 times 5 pi is 5 pi, and then 2 times 6 is 12 plus, and then here we have k pi. And in all of this, k is an element of the set of integers. And that's it, we've solved it. So not really a super tough problem, um, but certainly a lot harder than some of the other problems that people do in trig. Uh, but still, it does require some, some trickery. Um, I think a pitfall might have been for some people, I don't know, um, would have been you know, immediately setting each factor equal to zero. And then you, know, you can solve this. And you get answers here, but those answers won't be valid because they won't check in the original equation. So something to watch out for. So it's always important to think a little bit about what's happening in the problem before you jump to solve it. And the reason I saw that is because I wasn't sure, should I multiply or should I just set each piece equal to zero? And then I thought about what cosecant was and I said, oh, wait a minute. Well, sine can't be zero, right? <laughs> so uh, kind of a fun problem. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there in the world. Good luck.